Hello and welcome to HD Calcs. I'm Rick and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can do some graphing basics on the Texas Instruments PI-84 Plus graphing calculator. If you don't have one of these calculators but would like one, check the link in the description down below. To do this, we'll use the Y equals key that looks like this located here. The window key that looks like this located here. The zoom key that looks like this located here. The trace key that looks like this located here. The graph key that looks like this located here. As well as the second key that looks like this located here in blue. The delete key that looks like this located here, and this variable key that looks like this, located here. To get started with graphing, first we have to go to the Y equals menu. To do that, we hit the Y equals key here, which brings up this menu here, where we can enter our functions. Let's start out with something simple. Let's go Y equals X plus 1. All right, first we have the x. To enter x, we use this x variable key here. Not the alpha x, this one up here at the top. So we go ahead and hit that. We see x on our screen, and then we go plus one. There we go, we've entered our function. Now if we wanna view it, all we have to do is hit the graph key here. And it'll go ahead and graph what we've entered. If we want to zoom in on this, all we have to do is press the zoom key, which brings up the zoom menu. We can zoom in with two here. We press it, and that puts a little cursor on our screen. That starts in the middle, but you can move around until you center it and choose where you want to zoom to. So let's zoom to right there. Hit enter, and we see we've zoomed in right there. If we want to zoom out, again, all we do is the zoom key, scroll down to zoom out, select it, and again, we have a little cursor there that asks us where do we want to center our zoom. So we'll center there, zoom out, and there we go. We can also manually choose our zoom in the window key. This gives us our window dimensions. Let's set our window to x and y, negative five, positive five. So to do that, we can just set our cursor there, hit the clear button, and go negative five by five, Clear that, negative five by five. Now if we hit graph, we can see we've reset our zoom to negative and positive five. If we wanna go back to the standard or default zoom, what we do is go to the zoom menu again, scroll down to number six, Z standard or zoom standard, Select it, and there we go. We're back to our default or standard zoom. All right, let's edit our function. So we go back to the y equals, and then let's change this x plus 1 to an x plus 0 0.5. So we move our cursor over and enter 0 0.5 over top of the 1, and hit enter. Again, we can view the graph with graph. There we go. And let's go back and add a second function. So we go y equals, scroll to the y equals 2, and let's enter this. y equals 3x squared minus 1. So we go 3x squared minus 1. And hit enter. 
Now, if we hit graph, we see we have both functions on our screen there. And if we want to zoom in so that we can see them a little better, all we do is press zoom, scroll down to zoom in, select it, and we default to the zero, zero. That works for us, so we just hit enter. And there's a better view of our two functions. If we want to determine exact values along our function, we can use the trace key here. So if we hit that, we see our cursor back on the screen, and we're tracing the y equals x plus 0 0.5. We see the cursor there, and if we scroll to the left or right, we see the values at the bottom of the screen change. So we see at x equals 1, y equals 0 0.5. But if we scroll to the right, our x and y values will change. If we want to see that on the other function, all we have to do is hit the up or down arrow key. So if we hit down, our cursor jumps to the lower one, and we can scroll along this other function to see our x and y values. If we want to see our function at a specific spot, we can do the second trace and enter a specific value. So we'll select one, hit enter, and say x equals one. There we go. We see our cursor has jumped to the one on our x plus 0 0.5 line and lets us know x equals one and y equals 1.5. If we press the up arrow key, we see we jump to the other function where x equals one and y equals two. We can also use this to determine zeros. So again, if we go second trace and scroll to number two, we can find our zero values. So we see we're already on our x plus 0 0.5. And it's asking for a left bound. So what we do is want to select the left and right side of where we want our zero to be. So if we want to determine the zero on our x plus 0 0.5, we can set our cursor here, hit that, and we now see a little arrow appear on the left side. Scroll over to the right side of our zero and select that. Now we have an arrow on either side, and it'll ask us to guess. So take a rough guess of where our zero will be. Eh, about there. We hit enter, and we see it calculates x equals negative 0 0.5 equals y zero. And if we hit enter, we're back to our screen. We can check the zero on our other function. Again, second trace, choose zero. And let's go down to this second function, where if we set our left bound there, our right bound there, and we say, oh, our rough zero point is right there. And it goes ahead and calculates our x value for our y zero right there. We can also determine minimum and maximum values. Again, if we go second trace, choose a minimum, number three. And let's choose our second function. So what's the minimum of this function here? Again, it's asking us for a left bound value. Well, let's choose that. Scroll over, give it a right bound value. 
and guess roughly where it'll be. And it should be the bottom here. So we'll put our cursor there, hit enter. And it gives us a minimum right here. If we want to find a maximum value, we go about the same way. Second trace. Select number four, maximum. And it'll ask us for a left and right bound value. So we'll just start here with our left. Scroll up. Eh. There's no good maximum point we can choose, so we'll just choose that. There's our left and right bounds. And since we know it'll be on the far right here, we'll just leave our cursor there, hit enter. And it gives us our maximum value between those two points. We can also determine intersections. Again, with the second trace, scroll down to number five, intersect. Choose that. And it's asking us to highlight which curves we want to intersect. So we're on our first curve or function there. That position looks good. We'll just hit enter. And our cursor jumps down to our second curve. Again, that looks pretty good. We can just hit enter there. It's asking us to guess. That's roughly where our intersection will be, so we'll just hit enter there. And we see it calculates our intersection point here. All right, and when we're done working with our graphs and want to go back to our main screen, all we have to do is hit second mode with the second function of quit. And there we go, we're back to our main screen. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really hope this has been helpful. If it has, you can help me out by hitting that like button and subscribe for more calculator tips in the future. And as always, good luck on those tests out there, everybody. You've got this.